Welcome back everybody to the Tradesman channel. My name is Jim if you're new here. If you're not new here and you caught the last video that came out uh, yesterday, we started work on this 1890s uh, reed lathe, metal lathe. So what we're going to be going to next is I've got, I pulled the headstock off in the last video. I got the uh, farmer engineered new drivetrain to convert this thing from line shaft to electric motor off. We're going to focus on the headstock for a little while. So the next couple of videos are probably going to be the process of cleaning this thing up. I've got to get the, the uh, chuck off the lathe. We're going to pull the Babbitt bearings apart, pull all the gears out. We're going to be very careful because this is new for me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm pretty sure I can learn it on the interwebs just like everybody else. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you on the other side of it. Uh, so I'm curious how this is going to work. I've never tried to take anything like this apart before. So I'm going to try to do is just a screwdriver in there. We're going to go light with it. I have the gears locked, but what I'm worried about, if it's something I have to hit or anything like that, we're not going to do it because I don't want to break any of these gear teeth. But I'm hoping with as nice as everything else came off of this, I'm hoping this comes off just as clean. So let's see. Who knows when the last time it uh, was off. No friggin' way. You guys seeing that? My life is never that easy. Oh, jeez, let's break it. No, we didn't break it, good. I'll have to, it comes off quick when it comes off. But there she is, very nice. A spacer here. Keep our eye on how that was oriented. As you can see, these threads are super clean. Let's uh, do a little rolling here. There's really no wear on those threads that I can really see. That is impressive. Well, there's a little casting stamp on there. 97. We'll have to see if Mr. Rucker knows well, some of the markings on this thing. I may send him some pictures in a private message. Uh, the guy from Vintage Machinery. He's really good. You guys, a lot of you guys mentioned him in the comments, and I actually discovered him. I've had people recommend him over the years, but kind of discovered him here recently, trying to learn about lathes and whatnot. Very educational. Let me move a light so you guys don't have quite so much shadow. If I know me, I'm going to lose about 50 of these screws by the time I'm all said and done. Now I haven't sprayed any PB Blaster on any of these screws. I hit some on the lathe last night on the bed and the ways. But this right here, this is just... Oh! Job opening. Handiest little light I have. It's rechargeable, it's magnetic, it makes a great camera light. Okay, there's one. Get that in the bucket of degreaser. Get this thread cut table off of here. So we definitely want to save that. You know, that's original to this. Kind of, it's neat. Little brass plate there. We're going to get that right in the degreaser, clean that up, see how well that comes out. 
So I took the boy's toothbrush from him because I don't think he's used it in a while. That's just my opinion. He's a teenage boy. They're all scumbags. Even my own. But I'll give it back to him when we're done. Of course, he's getting big now. I'm just using hot water and simple green. We'll see how well it works. It always works great on chainsaws. I also have a heated ultrasonic cleaner if it comes to that. Look at that. Cleaning up really well. Now I don't mind the patina of years on things. But I figured I was going to do this project and we might as well do it right. Do it nice. Because it looks like whoever had it before me, they must have taken the time really taking care of it. Now we can see what kind of shape these old Babbitt bearings are in. Let some parts soak in the degreaser. No. I'm really curious to see what kind of shape these old Babbitt bearings are in. If they're original, they should be lead poured. I have to get these Babbitt bearings apart, but we want to get them apart to where we don't damage them because if we damage them, I've got to melt the lead out of there. It's usually lead and antimony melted out of there and we'd have to pour new ones, which is not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a punch and right at the seam of the bearing, we're going to be very gentle with it because I don't want to break any of the casting either. And just start to work that. You can see it's already separating. So once I have it started a little bit, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'll use my big screwdriver. We want to be very careful not to damage those bearings in any way, shape, or form. You can see it's all starting to separate. Same thing on this side. This we just have to be really super careful with it. As you can see, as we start working it out, this whole, the whole top of this journal is coming with it. And there's some shim stock or something in here it looks like, or it might just be lead, who knows. Make sure we eat plenty of it though. A little bit of shim stock, so we don't want to lose that. Worst comes to worst, we can replace that easy enough. Unless we destroy it first. Yep, started to a little bit. That's all right. I understand how hard it is to see what I'm doing in the shop because this this machine blends in with everything. Look at that. Pretty cool. They're actually in really good shape. Well, something I'm curious about, I do have a little rattling in here, but I, I believe it's this guy. And now I can kind of look and see if we have play in the bearing or if it's just that that's doing the uh, chattering. Getting smarter in my old age, guys. I'm starting to wear gloves more than I ever used to. I usually hate working in gloves, but I see greasy oil stuff. Alright, let's see what we get. I'm hoping... There we go. that. So you can see right there, see those striations in that lead. That's actually from the shaft. So we're going to have to make sure we clean the shaft up well. That bat is still very thick. You can see where it's shinier there. That's your dovetail. And the only way to replace that is you have to take a blowtorch, melt it out, and then you have to cast new in with the shaft in place trying to hold everything perfectly centered. It's not a process I feel like doing, but if we have to do it, we'll do it. But we'll see if we can get that. I don't want to really clean it up. 
because um, I don't want to change the tolerances inside that bearing, but we might be able to play with the shim stock a little bit, clean that shaft up some, and see what we get from there. Back here, those lines you see, I wiped across with the finger and the lines disappeared. Well, that's not too shabby. And the journals on this side, they're a little different. I'm not seeing the dovetail like I did on the other side. Now we can get this lower journal out. And I tell you what, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for slop of any kind in this stuff. And if I have to love tap out a little bit, it makes me happy. Now everybody's going to give me hell for using a metal hammer on this. I'm barely touching it. I mean, I am just barely tapping that out. Just enough to get it moving. And there you have it. Yeah, it's kind of neat how they used to do those. Tell you what, everything way back when just seems like it was built so much better. I'm not saying that that's always the case, but it just, it really does just feel that way. I'm always going to wonder who did the work on it, what were the repairs done. Now, honestly, I'm not seeing a lot of signs of, of major repairs, which is really, really encouraging. You would think, without that, that you would have... You would just think there would be a heck of a lot of uh, slop and play and everything, but I tell you what, it's, it's really coming along nicely. So this guy right here, this operates our change of direction for the feed, for the, um, well, for the apron and for the cross slide. So you put it all the way down, it goes one way. Middle is neutral, put it back the other way, spins it the other way. And it's neat as all this works. Now it's a pretty simplistic little gearbox there, but now I have to figure out how am I getting it out of there. Because i got to be honest with you, there's not a lot to look up on these mill or on these lathes. I mean, you see a few of them working, but I haven't seen anybody do any kind of really an in-depth restoration that I can find. So maybe this will be the first at nauseum restoration video. We'll see, huh? Now let's see if we can get that apart. Yeah, let's see here. There we go. Boy, those teeth on those gears are absolutely pristine. Gives you how much better that works when you pull the shit out, right? There we go. Boy, that's in good shape, isn't it? You guys sick of hearing that yet? Probably thinking this guy sounds like a broken record every time he talks right now. Well, I'm just excited to see this looking this good. It's getting late everybody, I'm getting tired, i got to go in and edit this yet so we can get it out to you. We're trying to get back to the vlog style if you uh, can't tell, but I make no promises because that's the way it is these days. So we're almost down to the point where we could start wire wheeling this off, getting all the grease, the gunk, the paint, and we're going to be painting. We're, gonna, we're doing the full Monty on this thing, no, uh, I need more coffee so my hands can shake more. There's no going, we're not half-assing this one. 
A lot of times on this channel you guys see me doing stuff just to get things running so I can use it right then. Well, I don't need to use this thing right now to get something done. This is a fun project. This is a project we're doing so that down the road I have something to pass on to my kids, they have something to pass on to theirs. And this is the type of thing that you do that with. I mean, it's crazy to believe, but in my grandkids' time this thing will be like 200 years old. And if we keep it running nice, it'll be kind of a neat heirloom. Of course, you never know, they may sell it for scrap metal like some people do. But uh, anyway, that's where we're at. There's the headstock. I have two things left to figure out how to take off and when I do I will run the camera for you guys. So I want to go through this entire process really in depth step by step. Now I will tell you the things that I do know as I'm doing it and I'll tell you the things that I don't know. I definitely don't want to come across as some kind of a lathe expert or somebody that you can learn how to do this from. There's a lot of other channels that know what they're doing. This is me, Weekend Warrior Jim here, getting this stuff done. The, um, I had a, the mention of Keith Rutgers' channel in my comments. A ton of those comments today had that in there. Until I'm getting tired. Starting to talk funny. But anyway, there was a lot of recommendations for his channel in my comments. And he is actually somebody that I do watch. He does amazing work. He really knows his stuff. I believe his website is VintageMachinery.org, Vintage Machinery, all lowercase, all one word, dot org. And he has a lot of information on there. He's really good at what he does. True professional when it comes to bringing these old machines back to life. This is my first go at a real tool restoration. And we're going to see how it goes because I tell you what, this kind of thing is just fun. It's good for the soul. So anyway, next time out. Get these last two items off of this headstock, then we're going to clean it up and we'll see how far we get towards maybe slinging some paint. I'm going to do this step at a time because what I want to do is put this thing back together as soon as the paint's dry, just so I don't forget. But the nice thing about covering this in depth and not just doing a bunch of time lapse videos, I can go back and watch my own videos on YouTube. Got to get those view counts up any way you can, boys. I'll be able to go back, watch those videos, and see exactly how I took this thing apart. We are leaving nothing out on this process. Absolutely nothing. It's going to get redundant, and it'll probably get boring, but that's the way she is. So have a good one, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one.